Oh, that was nice. <clears throat> My dear brothers and sisters, everybody in the New Apostolic Church knows today that it's my 85th birthday. Those birthdays, they come without asking for them, without pleading for them. But this birthday has also brought something, something which cannot be encased in words. While the, while the chief apostle served us so beautifully, I was reman, reminded to the promises of the man of God that lived three 4,000 years ago, they have spoken of us. Our Heavenly Father awakened in them the expression when he said, in the last days, praises of God will come on earth. Who are these praises of God? Those are the ones who have something to praise our Heavenly Father for, something to praise him. Our ancestors have gone through millennia and never had an opportunity that somebody offered them to be reconciled, that their sins would be forgiven, that their names would be entered in the Lamb's Book of Life, that they would be branded with the mark of the Lamb, that they would be fructified with the life of the Father, out of which the childhood comes into being. They have gone through millennia. This offer was not, was not given to them. This is what our chief apostle so beautifully, so beautifully expressed. This is the reason for which we are thankful and praise our Heavenly Father. This is the reason for which we bring our offerings. It's a pleasure to bring an offering. It's a, it's a pleasure to do something which is pleasing in the, in, the, in the sight of our Heavenly Father. Tell me, we cannot include everything in words. What makes our chief apostle so special? Not only that he has the office of a chief apostle. That is not everything. What makes him so special? <clears throat> I never heard since he was a chief apostle that ever anybody criticized one of his words. I never heard that. What makes that? Not because he comes from Switzerland. Not because he, he, he learned a special trait or anything like that. But there is a secret in him which our Heavenly Father has laid in him. And that is, whatever he offers, whatever he brings to our attention, it makes us happy. Huh? It draws us closer to him. He has a magnet. That is a gift which money cannot buy. That is a gift, my dear brothers and sisters, which our Heavenly Father has invested in, in him. And that is the magnetic power that draws us together and keeps us together. And then something else he has. And you know what that is? He is a prayer. When he prays, I could listen to him, I don't know how long. I love praying myself. I can assure you that. And I do pray a lot. And we pray a lot. But when I hear the chief apostle pray, you know what I think then? Chief Apostle, hör nicht auf. That is good English. Uh, don't stop. Don't stop. Because praying is a conversation with our Heavenly Father. Tell me, my dear brothers and sisters, where is that hidden magnet that keeps us faithful, true, and honest and puts that which the new apostolic church offers us puts this above anything and everything what this world offers. What is that? That is something which cannot be proven, but it exists. It's in the nature, and you know what that is? It is in the nature of a father. I am a father, I can speak out of experience. To have his children in his closeness. A father wants, wants, us, wants to have his children with him. And it is in the nature of the children. I was also a child. I promised my father I would come to Canada and make a thousand smackers, a thousand dollars, and go back to my father. But before I made a thousand dollars, my father unfortunately died, and that kept me in Canada. But there were ties between me and my father that drew us together, and we belong together. And so is it also with the 144,000 
what makes them the 144,000 out of nations, tongues, and people, and heathen? The invisible investment which our Heavenly Father has invested in them. The bride has a longing for the bridegroom. The bride is willing to separate herself from father and mother who loves her very, very much and clings to a total stranger, a bridegroom. And the bridegroom, he wants to have, he wants to have the bride. Why, why does he take her in her arms uh, and squeeze her real, real hard? Huh? Because he loves her. Those four items, those, those four magnets, they live in our father, <coughs> in his children, in the bride and in the bridegroom. And when the chief apostle shows us the beautiful time in which we are born, the time in which all these promises from our Heavenly Father, which he promised that he will take us home, that we live in this time, is it necessary that somebody becomes a fool in the New Apostolic Church? Is it necessary? Why, are, why, why do some fools come out of it? Because of their icky icky, of their ego. That doesn't go according to their will. In the kingdom of heaven is only one will. And the Lord Jesus in the wolf is in the Lord's prayer. Thy will be done. That is the overcomer. For them our heavenly father will send his son. They will fashion. They will fashion God's family. The chief apostle showed us that the son of God gave, uh, brought such a great sacrifice. He gave his life. And his father gave his son. Why? Because our Heavenly Father wanted to have a greater family. Not that he should employ them for some work, but share with him the eternal glory. For this he paid the greatest price whereby he could offer us a reconciliation. And we have our chief apostle that said so beautifully, our sins are forgiven. And nobody else has a right to remember that which has happened before. We often heard after the service, after our sins are forgiven, after we participated in the Holy Communion, we go out of this church, out of this business, out of this building as virgins. Is there somebody nobler than a virgin? Let's appreciate this all in the future. Amen. Amen.